Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to begin by thanking uh, the Commission for uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak on behalf of Pharma. Uh, Pharma is an association representing the, the leading local pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical uh, manufacturing uh, companies who are devoted to generating the um, medicines to help uh, patients live longer, healthier, more productive lives. Um, pharma members um, have been affected by the industrial policies implemented by India, both in India, but also by the, um, by the model the, uh, that India has set and that others uh, have been tempted to emulate. The, I think the pharmaceutical sector presents um, a good demonstration of the impact for the problems associated with the industrial policy of, of forced localization, misappropriation of, of intellectual property, and, and indigenous innovation, which the Indian government has been seeking to pursue. Over the past two years, um, some 15 products of, um, have had their, pharmaceutical products have had their patent rights undermined in India. And this has been implemented through, through policy, um, through a ser several different policy devices aimed at narrowing the availability and viability of patents. Um, for example, um, India has, has narrowed the the patentability criteria inconsistent with TRIPS, um, making it more difficult to obtain patents in India. Um, the Indian Patent Act, Section 3D, um, adds a fourth patentability condition, so-called enhanced efficacy, um, to the three conditions recognized by TRIPS, that is novel, in inventive step, and industrial application. And the Indian Supreme Court has, has further qualified or narrowed that patentability requirement to limiting it to enhance therapeutic efficacy. This provision um, is only applicable to drugs and agrochemicals, thus constituting a discrimination on the basis of a field of technology. India has also used compulsory licenses um, under the patent, I mean, has used compulsory license under the Patent Act, uh, Section 84, um, citing among other grounds um, failure to, to, to work the the, um, the patent that is manufactured um, locally. Um, Indian, um, Indian firms are also seeking additional patents under Section 84, and the government is considering additional potential patents, excuse me, compulsory licenses under Section 92, and further revocations under Section 66. There are other, and I cite these, I won't go into them here, but I, I cite these in the, in the written testimony, other measures that they, um, the Indian government has used, such as pre-grant opposition proceedings, um, uh, the uh, failure to provide regulatory data protection and um, lax enforcement of patents when generic producers seek marketing approvals um, during patent term. While Indian officials and Indian industry will often argue that weak, the weak IP rights are necessary for patient access, patents are not um, a main or indeed a significant reason for poor access to health um, care faced by Indians. Um, IMS, the IMS consultancy assessed last year that the main obstacles um, to health, um, the main, main obstacles to access to health care, especially in rural air, areas, stem from a lack of health infrastructure, hospitals, clinics, doctors, um, as well as a lack of a public safety net and insurance. Some 65% um, of Indians do not have access to modern health care facilities. Only 15% um, are covered by any health insurance. I believe you've had testimony from others in the financial space who may have been able to opine on that context. If the government were serious about reducing the prices of innovative medicines um, for its patients, it could certainly it could begin by reducing the tariffs and taxes that it imposes. According to WTO data, average applied tariffs um, in, for products sold in, um, sold in India is in the range of 10%. Um, and if you add the additional tax, the IMS has come up with a total number of in the range of 20%. And in fact, the government collects more in tariffs and taxes on pharmaceuticals sold in India than it does, and it actually spends on medicines. Um, the government simply has just not prioritized health care. Um, the government spends, um, in, 20, in 2011 and 2012, spent $5 billion, representing 2.13 um, percent of government spending, or about four, uh, four and a half dollars per capita. Um, that um, um, compares um, very poorly even with other um, 
uh, developing countries. So the, government, the Indian government spent only the equivalent of 1.2% um, of GDP on healthcare, while, um, which is about the same level as Niger. Um, China, for instance, is at um, 2.9, so nearly 3%, South Africa at 4%, and so on. Um, and indeed, at the same time, um, India um, is pursuing a space program which, on which it spends over a billion dollars a year and has its own foreign development aid of, on which it spends about a billion, dollar, a billion dollars a year. For all the protests about, um, about access, the IP policy seemed principally designed um, for local, local, um, local incumbents. Um, Simpla, Simpla chairman um, Hamid, um, who's, a very, who's a revered businessman in, in India, has called for the automatic, his words, automatic license uh, of foreign patents to local firms. Finance Minister Chidambaran, when he was here last, last year in the spring for Bank One meetings, um, um, spoke at length about um, the importance of India following the indigenous innovation model of, of uh, China. And indeed, if one looks at the legislative history associated with 3D um, and the Supreme Court's, um, the Indian Supreme Court's ruling, in, uh, its opinion in Klebeck, um, you can see that the, the legislative history makes clear that um, a significant purpose of, the, of that legislative provision was to, um, to make it more difficult to obtain patents and thus expand opportunities for local firms. And then at the same time, the U.S. Is, provides an open market for, um, and a good thing, that provides an open market for, for Indian producers. Some 40% of all marketing approvals for generics in the U.S. in, in 2013 were for Indian products. Um, the sad irony of, of, these, of these policies, um, of the consequence of these policies, is that it's the Indian citizens who are, who are um, harmed by these, um, these policies that undermine innovation. The, the, the weak IP policies make it more difficult to attract foreign investment. Foreign investment is actually the, um, the real engine for development for major uh, for emerging economies. And it's not by accident that, that India only attracts something like 2.7% of global uh, research and development funding um, on investment, while China, with its relatively stronger IP system, attracts something in the range of 18% in the US, um, over 30%. That's data from the Patel, study, um, Patel Institute. UN data um, shows that Indian FDI stock in 2012 was equal to just about 12% of GDP, um, the, which is far below the, the average for developing countries, which is around 30%. <coughs> These policies also have obviously an impact on, on our members, the farmers' members. Um, the, the, India is an important economy by uh, purchasing power terms, um, third, third largest economy in the world, and our 11th largest trading partner. And, but more, um, at least as importantly, India's policy set a, um, a precedent um, that is um, uh, highly problematic for industries which are based on intellectual property and intellectual capital more broadly. And to conclude, I'd like to, to thank, um, thank the Commission for, for taking the time to, to investigate the Indian policies. India is a great country with, with uh, um, important st um, strategic and economic relevance to the United States. Its progress and reform since the late 80s has been simply remarkable. The reform, um, one would hope that the reform of IP policies in the future could revive the currently flagging domestic agenda, and we hope that this Commission's report will play an important role in that, in that process. Thank you.